5 p.m. recap. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Sunday, March 7, 2021. Fox report. DC police charge 12-year-old after four carjackings, second suspect still at large. Washington, DC. Police arrested a 12-year-old boy Friday who with another male is suspected of going on a carjacking spree, targeting four cars in one hour before police apprehended him, according to reports. The other suspect remains at large. One of the suspects pulled a gun on each victim and demanded they exit the car, according to the Metropolitan Police Department. The first attempted carjacking occurred at 29 minutes past 6 p. Fox Report Pope visits Iraq's war ravaged north on last day of tour. IRBIL. Iraq, Pope Francis arrived in northern Iraq on Sunday, where he planned to pray in the ruins of churches damaged or destroyed by Islamic State extremists and celebrate an open air mass on the last day of the first ever papal visit to the country. The Vatican hopes that the landmark visit will rally the country's Christian communities and encourage them to stay despite decades of war and instability. CNN report. You can buy the first ever tweet. The current bid. $2.5 million. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is selling the first ever published tweet as an NFT. A kind of digital collector's item. Dorsey shared a tweet on Friday with a link to a digital platform called Valuables. That allows for the buying and selling of tweets autographed by their creators. The tweet up for bid is Dorsey's first tweet from 2006. Which says, just setting up my TWTTR, so far. The tweet has reached a bid of $2. CNN report. A seven-year-old boy went back into a burning home to save his baby sister. A seven-year-old boy named Eli saved his baby sister's life when he jumped into her room through a window to rescue her from a fire that destroyed his family's home. It was a typical night at the Davidson household in New Tazewell, Tennessee. On December 8, Chris and Nicole Davidson fed their three children dinner tucked them into bed and were asleep by half past 8 p.m. Hours later, Nicole Davidson woke up to the smell of smoke. Al Jazeera report. French billionaire MP Olivier Dassault dies in helicopter crash. French billionaire politician Olivier Dassault has been killed in a helicopter crash, the AFP news agency reported, citing parliamentary and probe sources. The private helicopter crashed on Sunday afternoon in Normandy where he has a holiday home, according to a police source. French President Emmanuel Macron paid tribute to the 69-year-old, saying on Twitter that Dassault never ceased to serve our country, to value its assets. Deutsche Well report. Swiss narrowly pass Muslim burqa ban. Switzerland voted to ban full facial coverings in public places on Sunday. Provisional results showed that the vote in favor of the ban had succeeded with a slim majority of just 51.2 percent. The referendum comes after years of debate, following similar bans in other European countries, such as France, Belgium and the Netherlands. Switzerland operates a system of direct democracy that has allowed the vote to go ahead. BBC report. U.S. pastor on leave after Melania Trump, trophy wife, comments. Pastor Stuart Allen Clark drew scorn for a sermon offering advice to wives he said would stop their husbands becoming distracted by other women. It included comments about Melania Trump whom he described as the epic trophy wife of all time. The pastor's General Baptist denomination has admonished him for his comments. A 22-minute video of his February sermon was shared on Facebook, where it has been viewed thousands of times. CNN Report a mailman, two little sisters, and weeks-long games of tic-tac-toe. Adam Finley loves his job as a mail carrier for USPS, he loves visiting with the people on his route and is always looking for ways to help the neighborhood during his more than 12-hour long shifts. So, when the schools in his Georgia community moved entirely online in the spring, Finley, or Mr. Adam, as the kids affectionately call him, couldn't help but feel sorry for the students stuck inside all day. Some going weeks or months without seeing their classmates in person. Al Jazeera report. How this say drones, missiles fired at Saudi oil, military sites. 
Yemen's Houthi rebels fired 14 drones and eight ballistic missiles at facilities of oil firm Saudi Aramco in Ras Tanura and at military targets in the Saudi cities of Damam, Asir and Jazan. The Houthi military spokesman has said. There was no immediate confirmation of the attacks from Saudi Aramco or from Saudi authorities. Two residents in the kingdom's eastern city of Dharan told the Reuters news agency that they heard a blast. Deutsche Well Report. Equatorial Guinea's largest city Bata rocked by explosions. Equatorial Guinea's largest city and main economic hub Bata was hit by four explosions on Sunday, local eyewitnesses reported. The cause of the blasts remains unknown. The state channel TVGE reported that there had been fatalities caused by the explosions and many people had been left injured. The health department had told health workers to head to hospitals. FA reported. TVGE said that the hospitals were being overwhelmed. Fox report. Biden administration converting Texas migrant centers to rapidly release detained families in 72 hours or less. The Biden administration will transform two Texas facilities where detained migrant families are held into Ellis Island-style rapid processing centers, meaning adults and children who cross the border will be housed for a maximum of 72 hours before being released into the U.S. In a court filing Friday, Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE said families will continue to be detained at a 2,400-bed detention center in Carn City and an 839-bed detention center in Dilly in Texas. But the U. BBC report. Myanmar coup. Party official dies in custody after security raids. On Sunday the body of Yu Kin Mong Lat was released to his family, who were reportedly told he had died after fainting. Photos show a blood-stained cloth around the 58-year-old's head. Activists say he was beaten while being detained by police and soldiers, and subjected to a harsh interrogation. Protests continue against last month's coup despite a bloody crackdown. The UN says more than 50 people have been killed since the military detained Ms. Suu Kyi, Myanmar's democratically elected leader, on 1 February. CNN report. House passes sweeping election bill that would counter GOP efforts to restrict voter access. The Democratic-led House on Wednesday approved H.R. 1, a sweeping government, ethics and election bill that, among other things, would counter state-level Republican efforts to restrict voting access, Democrats describe the package as anti-corruption legislation that would expand voting access and improve accountability and transparency in Washington. Republicans, however, argue that the legislation limits political speech and represents an overreach and a federal power grab that Democrats are advancing in an effort to gain an advantage in elections. BBC Report. Senegal Protests. Teenager killed in clashes after Usman Sanko's arrest. He was killed on Saturday in clashes between demonstrators and security forces in the southern city of Diab. Protesters had tried to burn down official buildings in the city. Mr. Sanko appeared in court on Friday accused of disrupting public order. He also faces a rape allegation. He denies the allegations and his supporters say the accusations are politically motivated. On Friday, Following violence in the capital, Dakar, and elsewhere, Interior Minister Antoine Félix Abdoulaye Diome vowed to use all the means necessary for a return to order. Deutsche Well Report. Coronavirus. German immunologist suggests COVID vaccine priority reversal. Germany should prioritize people for coronavirus vaccines by the number of their social contacts rather than their age. Immunology expert Michael Meyer Hermann told local media on Sunday. He pointed out that the plan followed by Germany and most other countries of vaccinating the elderly and most vulnerable first had reduced the number of deaths, but had not had a significant impact on the pandemic as these people tended to have the fewest social contacts. Al Jazeera report. Bolivians vote in local, regional polls amid COVID-19 concerns. Bolivians are voting in municipal and regional elections on Sunday amid a surging COVID-19 pandemic that has stretched the country's healthcare system. After restoring democracy in 2020, today it is up to us to elect our territorial representatives. President Luis Arce tweeted shortly after polls opened at 8 a.m. local time 12.00 GMT. Bolivia is a democratic model in a pandemic, he said. About 7.
Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell. Thank you.